Hello, friends. Please, give me a chance to speak. Friend or foe, you've come to this video because you're interested, either out of malice or out of benevolence. Uh, I appreciate you clicking on this video or tapping on the video because who uses a computer nowadays? Um, so I want to make two things very clear. I don't hate Downpour. I just don't like Spearmaster's campaign. Uh, also, I'm sick, so I'm going to be out of breath, um, and there's going to be a lot of cuts because I'm going to have to go blow my nose and uh, drink water to make sure that my mouth doesn't get too chalky. So, if you saw my last video, um, which you don't have to, uh, these are separate topics, but I went on like a 20 minute rant on my opinions on downpour as a community. Um, and I'm not a huge fan. I'm just gonna say it. Um, Downpour brought in a lot of fans to Rain World, and that's a really, really good thing. That is a really good thing. It gets more people playing it. But unfortunately, it seemed to drag out the most immature, like, hot-headed people. And it's really frustrating trying to have a conversation because these people... And when I say these people, I mean, like, downpour fans as a whole um, um, are very loudmouthed and get really defensive when you criticize anything. So much that people just say, oh, you're a downpour hater. How dismissive of my views, right? Like, my views shouldn't matter to you. If they do matter, that's on you for giving me the power to alter your emotions. I want to make that clear. Your emotions are your choice. My opinions are my opinions. Your opinions are yours. We don't have to agree. But just be a human being and be respectful. That's all I'm asking. So be cordial in the comments. You are allowed to disagree and you are allowed to be upset. Not necessarily your feelings are valid. Uh, that means that you probably probably care too much but again it's like i said in the last video in the like ranty 20 minute section it's more of a culture thing the internet has made people very different and i i've got mm, i've got a lot to say but that's not what we're getting into um we're simply trying to talk about the amazing game rain world and very specifically why Spearmaster's campaign sucks and bastardizes a lot of elements, not just from the base game, in, like, Downpour 2. Spearmaster is... No, hold on. Gameplay-wise, Spearmaster's fun until you get to... F oh, by the way, obviously there will be a ton of spoilers, not just for Spearmaster, but for Hunter... So for base game Rain World as a whole. Um, and, and then very specifically Hunter... Uh, I think I'm going to touch on Rivulet. I don't think I'm touching on Saint at all. Um, it's, it's a lot of Hunter. It's a lot of Iterators. Yeah. Um, and then general, general lore, general story. Um, so Spearmaster? Very fun campaign for the beginning. Spearmaster is the easiest campaign to feed yourself. And you can go a full cycle without needing to stop for food dude spearmaster's food requirement is so cool and the way that you feed yourself amazing spearmaster is so much fun if you're j if you don't care about the story spearmaster is the easily one of the most fun campaigns but if you're doing the story you have no mouth and then you have to carry this stupid pearl with you for like half of the rest of the game and on my first playthrough i didn't know about the precipice so i went up five pebbles saw that stupid purple rot i went right back down grabbed a grapple worm went around up the exterior had way more fun that way came down went all the way back through um uh, and then eventually got to industrial, oh, that's right, uh, I didn't go back down, I went 
um, chimney canopy, industrial, shaded citadel, and device surprise. What the heck? I'm not in Shoreline. I forget what it's called for Spearmaster's campaign, but that was really cool to experience for the first time. Um, and then you go up, looks to the moon, looks to the moon, and uh, I didn't know that there was an easier route, but uh, I wasn't using a map. Um, but again, you have to carry this stupid pearl, and you have no mouth, so you just have one effective hand. Um, you have to, like, put it on the ground and make sure you don't lose it, all while getting shot by spitter spiders, and it's just like, oh my god, please leave me alone. Ugh. And there was a comment on the last video, something I'd never even thought about during Spearmaster's campaign, which is, my apologies, which is uh, that some people didn't know that you had to carry the pearl. Now, I had played base game Rain World long enough. I've even carried Hunter, like pre-remix, before you could turn off Jetfish knocking stuff out of your hands when they bump into you. I've completed the challenge where you actually bring the Green Neuron Fly and the Aquamarine Pearl to Moon as Hunter. It is not easy, but it's it's doable. It's it's a fun challenge. If you're if you're looking for that, it's really fun. And I've done it again for Downpour, uh, so that you can get the collection, um, the Pearl dialogue. Very nice thing that Downpour added. I wish that was added. I wish that was integrated into the base game, but I do understand why it wasn't. Um, it definitely makes it feel more like, uh, less like an adventure. It's like, oh, you can do it once and then you just have all of it. But for base game Rain World, it's like, if you forget, you either got to look it up or do it in game. I appreciate the heck out of that. Okay. I'm lonely gagging. Um, I am really, really trying to, um, have a positive interaction with this, because I know this video is going to get condemned by certain people, and I really hope I'm wrong, and it's just a very loud minority, not the, uh, expansive majority of Downpour's fan base. but I will just say this. You can kind of tell when someone's a fan of Rain World that got introduced after Downpour and before Downpour. So, that's all I'll say. There's a, there's a lack of maturity. Uh, but please, prove me wrong, and if you disagree, remain cordial in the comments. Um, that's really all I ask. Just be positive about it. Um, so, I'm just gonna get into it. Um, I've got, I don't know if you saw the last video, uh, where I talk about if the playable creatures are furless, if they're smooth, or if they have fur. I didn't even try to answer if they're slimy. I, there's just no proof, as far as I can tell, going one way or the other. And I won't say to the conclusion that I came across, but I will say that I believe that they are smooth. Not that it matters, but, um, okay. So, and I'm not just reading from a script, these are just points. I have a bad habit of rambling. The reason I wrote so much down is so that I can try to avoid that. With that all being said, if I begin to ramble, there will be text on screen, either in the corner, because I prefer putting it in the corner, or it'll be really big in the middle, telling you to skip to that point, and I usually tell you what I ramble on about. Okay, <laughs> that's a lot. All right, we are almost 10 minutes into it and I haven't even begun talking about the main topic of the video. Wonderful, okay. Come to expect that. So, I wanna talk a lot about the characterization of the iterators, which is what Spearmaster does a lot of. You have you have Looks to the Moon, pre-Collapse, you have five pebbles in his closest state to the rot uh, forming uh, that we've ever seen in the timeline. It is also important to note that Spearmaster is the furthest in the timeline, um, or the, the like furthest in the past that we've seen. And when I say in the past, I'm obviously referring to Survivor slash Monk as the... Uh, 
as the like modern day. Anything else is the future, anything before Survivor is the past. Um, and it seems like a lot of people agree with me, which is good. Um, that means that people understand that Survivor is important, um, but not any, anyways, anyways. Okay, so, Spearmaster campaign sucks for a lot of reasons. Um, there is a lot of mischaracterization, and I understand that it's downpour, it's not base game. Um, the downpour developers are allowed to do whatever they want to do with it, but I feel like they took every character in the worst direction possible. Um, so ultimately I'm going to be focusing, um, on the bastardization of Seven Red Suns and no significant harassment. I'm going to sort of talk about how Spearmaster deals with iterators as a whole. I'm going to talk about dialogue. Um, and then I'm going to come back around and talk about Hunter, uh, because Hunter and Spearmaster have a very similar, uh, path. Um, and I've got a lot of opinions. Some facts. Okay. So, Seven Red Suns was completely bastardized in Downpour. Um, Seven Red Suns goes from being this, and how did I word it? Goes from being this oblivious but cautious, good-natured but passively aggressive mentor to a belligerent fool. In base game Rain World, we don't know too much about Seven Red Suns. Um, we know that Five Pebbles goes to, and I think it's confirmed it's a he, uh, in base game two. But we're talking about downpour, so I'll use downpour pronouns. Um, um, so Seven Red Suns, um, five, excuse me, Five Pebbles goes to Seven Red Suns for advice, uh, for mentorship and just sort of ranting. They're clearly very good friends. Um, um, and Seven Red Sons is kind of smug. Um, he, in, in one of the dialogues, in one of the Sky Island Pearl dialogues, uh, is it Sky Islands? It is. It's, uh, it's the earliest dialogue that we have with a confirmed cycle day, actually. It's in Sky Islands. For Downpour, I don't know specifically which pearl it is, but it's in Sky Islands. Um, so, so, Seven Red Suns, during their conversation, uh, and this sort of relates to the um, Garbage Wastes Pearl, where Five Pebbles, from a very early age, it's very obvious that he is angry. And talking about the Olive Green Pearl on the wall, the, the atop the wall, um, th it makes sense that he, of anyone, would be so angst, would be so moody and angsty, because um, there were a lot of ancients, forerunners, uh, I'm probably gonna call them forerunners, because that's just what I've call, come to know them as, uh, but I'll try to use ancients so that we all stay on the same page. <laughs> My apologies. I'm probably gonna cut these parts out. Um, where, so the olive pearl, the olive green pearl, uh, from the wall, talks about how a lot of ancients had a lot of, uh, well, I, I don't know if it was a lot, but certain ancients had very strong opinions against Five Pebbles and his construction, because he was being constructed and it cast a shadow upon Shaded Citadel, blocking out their holy site. And a lot of ancients had a problem with this. So... Five Pebbles was pretty much hated on from the very start, and, uh, um, of course, in that same pearl, the olive green one atop the wall, um, the ancients basically try to make the moral argument of saying, like, well, he is our creation, he is our child, we need to, like, give him these resources no matter how you feel, 
um, but also at the same time, stop constructing him. <laughs> it's like, pick a side, you guys suck. <laughs> um, and so in one of the Sky Islands, Pearl, Sky Island, is it Sky Islands or Sky Island? No, it's Sky Islands. So in the Sky Islands, Pearl's dialogue, the earliest one to date, uh, 1591.290, Five Pebbles Tell Seven Red Sons about his resentment towards the big problem. Uh, I don't know if he specifically uses it in that one, I didn't write it down, but uh, he uh, expresses his displeasure with toiling away at the the task that the ancients gave them and doesn't seem to care because they're all gone and it doesn't matter anymore and honestly five pebbles is justified in that i don't think anyone even most iterators agree with him on that front i, I think um it is also important to note and i know we're not talking about base game we're talking about downpour but to expand upon my point of Seven Red Suns was bastardized in Downpour, it is very important to note that Downpour um, gave us a name and even a face with who is attached to the gold pearl in Chimney Canopy. That's the one that talks about... The gold pearl in Chimney Canopy is the one that talks about the process of how to manipulate genomes to um, cross oneself out using genomes to altering genomes using temperature fluctuations and blah 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 and it explains how it explains not only how the rot formed but also what happened it's 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 a really good very important pearl to understanding the lore of rain world uh, and I'll make a note of this right now. Uh, Downpour, very specifically Spearmaster's campaign, does a really, really... Uh, doesn't do a good job, I'll be honest. But it does deliver on helping the less informed get caught up. Uh, if you play Spearmaster's campaign, you can understand quite a lot of even base game uh, lore and... Although it's delivered in a really uninteresting way, at least it sticks to the Rain World formula. If you have to go search out and find it, it's these broadcasts. But if you're on this video, you're familiar with Spirit Master, so I don't need to mansplain to you. No, in all seriousness, uh, I don't need to explain it to you. So, so back to the original point. Seven Red Sons was clearly trusted by Five Pebbles, um, and Five Pebbles clearly talked to Seven Red Sons about some kind of obvious things to Seven Red Sons. And Seven Red Sons is pretty smug, pretty uh, snooty in his response, and he's basically like, well, I'll spell it out for you, not because you're not, not because you're stupid or naive, but also, I'm not saying you're not. Uh, if you were better at reading between the lines, what does he say? If you were better at reading between the lines, you would know that all of us feel the same way. And then Five Pebbles is like, well, then why do we do it? And Seven Red Sons basically says there's, at any given moment, there's two things you could be doing. You could do the work as you're supposed to, or you could do nothing. Um, all while the equipment erodes, all the same. Uh, and then he says, imagine this. Um... Given an infinite amount of time placing bugs in a maze, one of them will eventually find a way out. Given an infinite amount of time, a even a minute chance will strike a positive. I think that's how it was worded. Um, and Five Pebbles says that I struggle to accept being a bug. And then, of course... So... And then, like... Hmm. I didn't write it down, um, but it's not too much longer. It's not too much longer after that dialogue that Five Pebbles takes on the pseudonym um, Erratic Pulse and starts going into these closed sliverous groups and starts sharing his philosophy, which is a pretty known philosophy too. Um, 
And it is important to note that base game Rain World, I've already said this, but I'll restate it. Um, in the base game, Seven Red Suns wasn't connected to the Golden Pearl, and it makes a lot more sense, and I'm going to explain it, but according to Downpour, Seven Red Suns had previously sent out the Messenger, Spearmaster, number 7, or I guess technically number 07, um, to Five Pebbles with the Gold Pearl so that Five Pebbles could actually know how to do it. Because it is instructions on how to do it. It's not just telling you, like, oh, this is a thing. The gold pearl is instructions. That's even... I don't think pearl dialogue has changed from downpour. Uh, I know that there's different variations depending on the timeline and where you're at at that moment. But I think all of Moon's dialogue is still the same. <laughs> For, like, Survivor. Um, so, yeah. We don't know who delivered the pearl to Five Pebbles. It's also possible it wasn't even delivered. It's possible that Five Pebbles had written everything himself and he had just gathered ideas from other iterators. It's very possible. Uh, and then he just flushed it. Um, it would be strange that it was flushed when it ended up in Chimney Canopy, but still, it's not necessarily delivered. A lot of people just have the, before downpour, a lot of people had the idea that it was explicitly delivered because Moon makes the suggestion of it's a good thing this never found its destination. Probably delivered by foot to avoid being overheard on broadcasts. Which is interesting. Because um, there's not really any police. <laughs> uh, oh, and I'll get, oh, I'll get to that. So, uh, I only have three dates written down. Um, one of them is the, I don't, remember explicitly what color it is but it doesn't matter it's the cav the ravine slash slash chasm pearl in subterranean it's the very top well it's not at the very top but it's at it's basically at the highest point in subterranean although downpour added an extra room so that you can get even higher so it's not at the very highest point but it's at the ravine uh where the earth begins to erode past farmer rays <laughs> Uh, and it's the one where Chasing Wind slash Grey Wind, because it's one of those iterators that has two names, like Big Sis Moon and Looks to the Moon. Um, that's when Chasing Wind tells Seven Red Suns about the rot, having become mobile uh, along the west and... What does he say? The west and the front legs or something like that? I don't fully remember, but... Um, and then Seven Red Suns, and I'll talk a little bit more about it in a second, but uh, it's important to get our dates. So 1591, or 1591.290, Five Pebbles tells Seven Red Suns about his displeasure, and they have that conversation. 1650, or 1650.800, or .800, um, what does UI stand for? Uh, unparalleled Innocence shows the rot on Five Pebbles' legs and shares it with the local group. Um, now, it's important to mention that... Ooh, is it on page four or three? Oh, yeah, it's on page four. It is important to mention that Seven Red Suns is possibly one of the furthest iterators among the local group. In all local iterator chats, Seven Red Suns is noticeably absent, um, especially with Subterranean's Ravine Pearl. Oh, it's especially poignant, excuse me. Um, after 31 cycles, Seven Red Suns still doesn't know about uh, Five Pebbles Cysts. He has to be made aware by uh, Chasing Wind. And then there's, of course, the, uh, the, there's, uh, one of the Sky Islands Pearl dial dialogues where, uh, it's the 1650.800 where, uh, Chasing Wind shares the information that Unparalleled Inno Innocence showcased, um, whatever, um, and then, and then uh, there's another Sky Islands Pearl. I don't have the date written down because I didn't think it would matter, but 
Uh, there's another one where, and I'm very certain it is Chasing Wind, or maybe it is that one. I think it's actually that one where Chasing Wind tells the local group, which is, which consists of five pebbles, Chasing Wind slash Grey Wind, as Mid calls them in that dialogue, no significant harassment. If I didn't say five pebbles, I'm pretty certain I did. And then Big Sister Moon slash Looks to the Moon. Four of them. Seven Red Suns is noticeably absent, which is interesting when talking about the local group. And, um, and Chasing Wind wanted to keep this as private as possible and trusted these three with the information. But it is interesting that Seven Red Suns is absent. Does Chasing Wind think it's Seven Red Suns? That, I mean, do they know that Seven Red Suns has the information? It's, it's interesting. And it creates kind of, it sort of creates a few logical problems with Downpour, but it's it's not too big a thing but it is really interesting to mention that out of all of oh and that go, sorry let me finish that sentence and out of all of the local iterator group chats because there's more than one seven red suns is noticeably absent especially from any of the non-anonymous ones it's also very likely that in the I didn't write it down in the dialogue and i'll put the date up on screen in this dialogue it's possible that the two anonymous users talking well there's three but one of them gets kicked out it's possible that out of the two iterators talking it's possible that it's no significant harassment and five pebbles just because of the hyphen no significant no significant i'm trying to say it too fast no significant harassment is known to use the hyphen a lot. It's in a lot of the con. It's in a lot of the conversations. Uh, so it's very likely that it's no significant harassment. Though I'm not gonna state any more because it is anonymous and it never gets confirmed, so it doesn't matter. The only one that is confirmed as erratic pulse is five pebbles. Uh, excuse me. So all of that was very long winded, uh, and I'm gonna finish up my point here. All this is important to note that the Gold Pearl was never given a name or a face in base game, and Seven Red Suns is noticeably oblivious to Five Pebbles' situation. That creates a lot of problems for Downpour because it changes Spearmaster from being this, er, Spearmaster, Seven Red Suns from being this caring friend to this fool who disregards Pebbles' safety. So if Seven Red Suns sent number seven to Five Pebbles previously to give the Chimney Canopy Pearl, the golden one, that means that Seven Red Suns didn't end up checking up on Five Pebbles after he delivered the pearl. They have that conversation, 1591. And then there is at least... 1,000, or excuse me, there's at least 59 cycles, like 58.7 whatever, but there's at least 58 cycles that passes, presumably. I don't have all the dates written down, I should have, uh, and I could, but I'm not going to, because it doesn't really matter. Um, but there's at least 58 cycles that passes between when Seven Red Suns had that conversation and when Moon is confirmed exhausted when she's just not dead because but she's heavily incapacitated to the point where her building has collapsed so 50 cycles later seven red sons never checks up on him and it takes 90 cycles for seven red sons to even become aware of the situation between five pebbles and moon which is very important if, since Seven Red Suns is not close to them, presumably, but it makes sense. Seven Red Suns is never considered, it is never, uh, is always absent during the local iterator chats, always absent. And it takes 90 cycles 
from when Five Pebbles and si Seven Red Suns last spoke to Chasing Wind telling Seven Red Suns that Five Pebbles has shut down all communications and no one can get a hold of Moon. And very specifically that he has the rot and no one can get a hold of Moon. It takes 90 cycles, almost exactly, almost exactly, if Seven Red Suns gave the Golden Pearl to Five Pebbles, that makes him so not intolerant, it ma irresponsible. It makes him so irresponsible. He just handed out this illegal taboo information, was like, all right, I trust you. And that goes to my next point. I'm gonna cut the video here so that it's easier for me to condense this. So my next point to, so my next point to this point is that Seven Red Suns Pearl is a lot of BS. Now I don't have it written down exactly what it is because ultimately it doesn't matter. Sorry. Because ultimately it doesn't matter what Seven Red Suns Pearl says. It doesn't matter word for word. It's a load of crab apples it's so worthless and it makes seven red suns look like an idiot if i remember correctly uh because i was replaying spearmaster's dial uh pff, dialogue uh campaign and i went to moon first to get the uh mark of communication because the first time i ever played spearmaster you don't start with the market communication but moon gives it to you so this time i went to moon first then five pebbles Back to Moon, Sky Islands, Communication Arrays. <laughs> I've never done that before. This is my second time playing Spearmaster, and being able to experience the Five Pebbles dialogue was so whatever, but I'll get to dialogue. Um, the Pearl mentions... Sorry, um, this this point is very sporadically written. It's not made the best, but I remember what I was trying to say. Hi. So, Seven Red Suns Pearl to Five Pebbles basically states that Seven Red Suns is sorry that he didn't realize that Five Pebbles wasn't in the correct mind space to be dealing with the information, but that he would be responsible with the information um, and that he really would like for Five Pebbles to try to fix Moon or something like that. Okay, you're not going to stand. That's okay. <laughs> but none of that makes any sense. It just, it, it doesn't make sense. And I think the conversation, uh, the Pearl, the, the dialogue for the Pearl, is more specifically stating that he wishes that, you know, everyone's trying to help and that he wants the communication ban to be lifted so that they can communicate with Moon and Five Pebbles and all that sort of stuff. And Five Pebbles is like, yeah, I'm the only one that can solve this now. Your benevolent charity is what got me into this mess. <laughs> Get out. <laughs> and then your poor, already frail body now has a giant X on it as you're presumably bleeding and just like... <laughs> it sucks. Poor Spearmaster. Um, but that doesn't make sense. Because, I swear to God. He sets eight alarms. Dude, you're already awake. Just turn them off until you're at work. Then turn them all back on. I swear to God. Okay. Um, seven red... <laughs> Cut that part. <laughs> it's totally unnecessary. Seven red suns pearl doesn't make any sense. And I know I've already said that. Because the subterranean... Or, sorry, not the subterranean. One of the Sky Islands Pearls dialogue between Five Pebbles, the 1591.290. Um, that dialogue ex ex basically explicitly states that Seven Red Suns 
knows that every iterator is frustrated. And he even uses the words erratically try and try. It is sure to strike a positive. Those are, <clears throat> I'm obviously, those are very strong, very decisive words. Those aren't loosely used words. The writing in the base game is really strong because the words dictate the tone and the intent of the character. There's a lot of moodiness in Five Pebbles' dialogue. He can't just have a normal conversation. He really is a Redditor where he's always just like, where he's always leaning over and is like, well, actually, this, this, and this. And he's, he's such a know-it-all. But like, and he's always trying to push the agenda that he's right. And it's like, dude, dial it back a bit. You'll notice that a lot of iterators are very flippant. They're very aloof. Um, except for Moon and Five Pebbles. Five Pebbles is just angry in all of his dialogues. And the Garbage Waste Pearl ex uh, showcases that frustration, that deep-seated frustration very well. It is very nicely done. And then there's Moon, who loves living. She loves living and just is very passionate. She's not, but she's also like a moderator. Mm, please be respectful when talking of the Void Seas. Okay, all right, let's calm down. But then you've got Seven Red Suns and uh, No Significant Harassment, who are very indifferent to the situation. They're very like, jokey and especially no significant harassment although in base game she i'll get to that point um is never explicitly given a place to be serious um there's never like a one-on-one -on -one conversation no significant harassment is always just kind of there which is beautiful for when they come out of nowhere during hunter's gameplay and is like yo here's your care package <laughs> <laughs> I love Hunters. That is the most heartfelt moment in the game. It is so nice. And I will talk about that. So, Seven Red Suns knows that Five Pebbles and all iterators are in a bad space. They all know that their equipment is eroding and that they're all going to age and die. Although Seven Red Sons even says that, but none of us truly die though. We will wake back right up again. Or maybe he doesn't say that. I was reading all the pro dialogue just to see if I missed anything. But, and then the other point is that, and I don't remember where this is, but I was playing the campaign and I remember Moon saying something about how Five Pebbles has always been an obvious outlier in his angst. He has always, and it's pretty obvious to even Moon, that he is disturbed. Um, it's really fascinating when talking to Moon about it. You don't talk to her, but when she talks to you about it. She makes it seem like... There is, she makes it seem like Seven Red Sons is an even bigger idiot because I guess he's just too blind to notice that the suicidal robot is suicidal. And what's more dangerous, a man with everything to lose or a man with nothing to lose, which is five pebbles in this case. He wants to die and he wants to showcase that he's right. I almost feel like it's, I almost feel like it's more important for Five Pebbles, to Five Pebbles, to be right. No, it comes from a good natured place, it really does, and a lot of people seem to forget that. Um, Five Pebbles wants to help all the iterators solve the problem. He wants to solve the problem for them. But it does come from a very self-fulfilling place as well. It's a very selfish thing to want to help others. And he is a brat about it. He's an absolute brat about it. Um, it feels like he has to be right. But at the same time, that even further proves that Seven Red Sons is a belligerent fool who is, like, blind to the situation and can't see it. Seven Red Sons seems to be the only iterator 
that can't see five pebbles is frustrated. What a wonderful plot point. Page one, complete. Wait, is that literally it? Didn't check up on him. Okay, no, that's it. So I'll cut the video here uh, and get on to my next point. Very specifically, um, I'll talk about the broadcasts because this is a minor point and it'll pace the video off better. All right, all right. Boom, we're back to, we're back to this little one. <laughs> I should make like a fake ad. <laughs> Put it in there, okay. So, not talking about that yet. Okay, broadcasts. I'm gonna try to keep this point very minor, because uh, it's mostly just uh, a thing that I don't like. That I'm sure some people love it, but I don't. Uh, I've got a lot of problems with it. Um, and But ultimately, it's all dialogue related. Um, biggest problem with broadcasts? Oh, sorry. Biggest problem with broadcasts is that they add no depth. They are very one-dimensional. They really don't add anything interesting. I'll talk about like the story dialogue between No Significant Harassment and, uh, and Seven Red Sons, but I'm talking about the, the other ones. Most of them are anonymous or their moon trying to get a signal out but the communications are blocked. So, a lot of the broadcasts are really poor. They're really poorly designed. Um, the biggest problem with it is that it just feels like the broadcasts are always trying to, like, boast something. A lot of it, and some of it is actually really beneficial, I won't say good, but a lot of it, some of it, some of it is really beneficial to the less informed characters. You, characters, players, the audience. Uh, some of the broadcasts spell out the lore for you, that way you don't have to go chase pearls and, or watch lore videos and connect the pieces or anything like that. It just, it sort of just spells out very important pieces. It's not done in a creative way, but like I said at the beginning, at least it's still done in a Rain World fashion where you have to go chase after these broadcasts. So it's not awful. It's really not awful. Uh, it does stay true to the Rain World method, which is you gotta go look for it, and it's usually in a spot that is so far away from your objective. So, it is nice. It is nice that they stuck true to that. Um, it, but yeah, it always feels like it's trying to boast something or someone. And then, for the dialogue that doesn't actually do anything for the player or, like, for the story, it just tries so hard to be, like, quirky. But it doesn't work because almost all of the broadcasts are anonymous. So to any character that we are already familiar with, we don't know any more about them. There's nowhere that chasing wind and unparalleled innocence banter about like, oh, the ethics of, well, it's not on, well, it's not your place to share five pebbles, you know, rot situation, unparalleled innocence just like gives two big fingers, uh, because <laughs> for the little characterization that we do know of unparalleled innocence, they kind of seem like a, you know, um, but yeah, the biggest problem is that none of it adds any depth. A lot of it is actually really detrimental to characters. Um, because most of it is anonymous, and a lot of it is just talking about characters, which is so lame. 
it's not anything interesting. It's always just like, oh, did you hear what No Significant Harassment did? And it's like, yeah, didn't they do something? And it's like, yeah, this is what they did. Oh, did they do that? Yeah. And it's weird, right? Yeah, it's weird. Okay. Um, and I'll get to that when I talk about No Significant Harassment, but... And Hunter, more specifically. <clears throat> yeah, that's kind of it for broadcasts. There's nothing too important. Uh, so, I'll, I'll, I'll then talk about significant harassment and no, and no red suns. No significant harassment and seven red suns. Did I say that right? Okay. No, I didn't. That. Oh, okay. So, no significant harassment and seven red suns turn into, like, a middle school, uh, the dialogue feels like it was written by a middle schooler, or maybe, like, a freshman in high school it just it's that sort of like gushy romance that's really dumb and this one is total opinion this one is totally biased but it just it i would rather have millennial writing where it's like oh yeah that just happened um, I would rather have that dialogue than dialogue that feels like it was written by a high schooler. And that kind of goes for not all of Downpour. It's a lot of Spearmaster, though. Spearmaster feels the most incomprehensibly, like, written. Um, it feels like there was no thought. It feels like, all right, these are the characters that we have. Let's push an agenda. Okay, this guy is, oh, he's, he's sorry that, well, seven red sons, he's sorry that he, uh, did this un, you know, unasked for gift, and it was misconstrued, or, you know, it was misused, it was abused, whatever, and, and now it led to harming two of, you know, seven red sons, like, closest friends and whatever, or I guess, no significant harassment, and look to the middle closer, but whatever. <laughs> Oh, and this one, this one was jokey, so we're actually going to turn them serious, and we're going to see their serious side now. Um, it's like, and then, and then you just throw in the middle, and it's like, well, we don't want to really touch on any of the characters that don't actually have much of a character, like Unparalleled Innocence or Chasing Wind. We're just going to mention them in the Rivulet campaign, and just sort of leave it at that. But we'll add in a bunch of anonymous characters, that way we can have our own writing styles be thrown into it and it's like that's so lame that's so lame like you're gonna ruin two characters that are already sort of faceless it really only works for some red zones but for downpour they gave him a design and i love the design oh my god seven red suns looks awesome way cooler than the red uh face yellow sun that everyone drew i never understood that um i never understood that i thought that was so dumb um <laughs> but the uh, the yellow face with the red sun and the the thing down the eyes and the purple solid seven red suns has a solid design um, I kind of wish that they gave him the white eyes, though. That would have been a nicer connection towards Seven Red Suns and Five Pebbles. That would have been nicer, in my opinion, but whatever. To each their own, right? Um, yeah, ultimately, broadcasts are just really boring. Some of them are just lore dumps, which is okay, uh, for the reason I've said previously, but... A lot of it is just, all of it is really lame. To be completely honest, all of it is really lame. It feels like it was the first, maybe the second draft, if I'm being gracious. Um, it just feels rushed. It feels rushed. It doesn't feel like any time was put into it, which is redundant, I know. But I, I really want to hammer that point across. Um, yeah, it's just uninteresting and another thing that i thought was really interesting that i actually didn't write on here i'm just remembering it right now the new regions that downpour adds there's no broadcasts in there what the heck 
Why are there no broadcasts there? That seems like such an obvious thing. Uh, excuse me. But it's just not. It, it, in order for you to like travel more of what Downpour has to offer. I'll be honest, when I was playing Downpour, I accidentally entered new regions and then immediately went back. I saw no purpose in going to these new regions. I'm sure some of them cut out time, but at the time I really was not interested in venturing to new lands. And I probably struggled less because of it, in all honesty. The only time I actually really ventured to a new region was, uh, I think it was Pipeyard during Saint. But if you know about Saint, and I won't say spoilers for Saint, but uh, Saint has unique naming. Um, and so I thought I was in like outskirts or maybe industrial and I was like, mm. and it took me way too long to realize, no, I don't recognize any of these rooms. And so I just went back. <laughs> Pretty funny. Um, at how little any of the rooms are actually used. <laughs> um, yeah, but, uh, that's, that's it for that point. So now it's time to talk about my favorite creature. And how it was ruined. Hunter, my dear sweet little sa- My dear sweet little savior. Uh, Hunter is my favorite creature ever. I will make a video talking about Hunter one of these days. Um, I feel like it's kind of important for me too, for me personally, because Hunter changed my life, genuinely. I don't care how pathetic that is to say. I love Hunter. All right, so I'm going to make the most minor gripe that I have with Downpour right now. Downpour made no, no significant harassment mail. My day is ruined. When I was going through the broadcasts, uh, I came across the one where it talks about no significant harassment basically becoming this beast tamer in Downpour, which is really lame, but I'll get into that. And they said he, and I was like, of course they made it a he. Of course they made it a he. It's so lame. No significant harassment is either a she or a they. Keep it either non-binary or non-stated or like disclosed or closed. I don't know. But why the silly, why is this silly character a male? Every single time in every single game, any single form of media, the woman is never allowed to just be silly. Why? Why is no significant harassment male? It's such... It bothers me! No significant harassment and Big Sis Moon have this, like, sisterly dichotomy where one of them is, like, the big sister and one of them is, like, the youngest who doesn't care about any of it and is just always, like... Like... That's so funny. I love their dichotomy. But then you make it male, and now no significant harassment sort of turns into this twerp. It was this, like, twerp energy, like, <laughs> and it's like, oh my god. So annoying. I absolutely hate it. Absolutely hate it. I can't believe they made no significant harassment male. That's such a downgrade. I liked it better when No Significant Harassment was d undisclosed because you heard a lot of people saying they, them, and I said she, and everyone had their preferences, and it was wonderful because everyone is allowed to have that. But now they've canonized it. Oh my god! It's so stupid. It's so stupid. Every single time in media, they always make the silly character a man, and I'm so glad that they avoided that in base game. Oh, so frustrating. I hate it. I hate it. Anyways, but yeah, <laughs> that's such that's such a minor gripe. 
but like, oh my god, I have, I have a big problem with it, as you can tell. So, Seven Red Suns, a no signaling harassment turned into a middle school gush group. I've already talked about it during the broadcast section, but their dialogue is so boring. It's so boring and uninteresting, and I don't care about any of it. <clears throat> the two of them are just like, like, tee hee hee, mm, I have a secret. <laughs> I know your secret, but I won't say it. <laughs> oh my no, he, he was mistreated. And then it's like, this is so cringe. <laughs> oh my. <laughs> what the hell am I doing? Alright. <laughs> oh, you're tall enough. Here, here. Why don't you face the camera, homeboy? And then you, you're slightly shorter, so I'll place you. Is that good? Oh, that's perfect. Wonderful. Hey, they're on my level now. Okay. So they're gonna they're gonna chill over there and I'll I'll remain over here. Alright, so but yeah, I mean as embarrassing as it is ooh, construction. As embarrassing as it is to physically like portray that, that's how the characters talk. How cringe. It's so lame. It's such a lame way to write. It turns into this weird, like, f it feels like a fan wrote it. And, I mean, that kind of plays into Downpour. It's an officially licensed spinoff. It's made by fans. And... Oh, I have to please don't sneeze. And for Spearmaster particularly, he suffers the most from it. It... The dialogue is so bad. The dialogue is so bad in Spearmaster. You guys went so hard with Saint. And I love the, f the few pieces of dialogue we have during Gourmand. Gourmand has such good writing for how little dialogue there actually is. It's so interesting to explore the themes of not wanting to leave a world behind. That's so interesting. And then you have Saint. Oh my god! I, that dialogue, I remember so much of it still. And you got Spearmaster, written by 12-year-olds, 14-year-olds at best. It drives me crazy, but I already talked about that. So... Oh, so that was Broadcasts Part 2. <laughs> so let me actually talk about No Significant Harassment and Hunter. They're, they're intertwined for this, for this piece. No Significant Harassment turns into a Beast Tamer. Uh, it's talked about in either... Uh, technically, it's like... Three broadcasts? It's at least two. There's one of an actual story one, and then there's one where it's just anonymous iterators talking about no significant harassment, and how they all think it's weird slash cool that he uh, takes these dull-minded creatures and allows and f makes them like do his bidding because he's trying to. I'm not going to say he anymore, I'm just going to say no significant harassment, bite me. Um, or they make no significant harassment, or they do no, no significant harassment bidding, um, and it's so lame, and I'll get into that. Um, so, it's, it's really dismissive of Hunter. Um, it... And this goes to a different point where Spearmaster and Hunter feel in contention with each other. They serve a very similar purpose in story and sort of theme. One is... Both of them are aides in this case. One of them is on a rescue mission and one of them is on a, like, calming 
mission. It's, but both of them are ultimately there to aid. It's fine, you know, it's okay. But nothing interesting is done with it. We already have like the perfect, that one, not that one, that one. We already have the perfect savior. And it's kind of nice that Spearmaster doesn't actually do anything. None of it is lore, or none of it is like relevant. Spearmaster's whole campaign is basically being irrelevant, which is kind of funny, but also really fitting, even in Downpour. Like, the world is passing all these creatures and beings by. They're all leaving. Uh, and then you've just got Iterator, <laughs> excuse me, and you've just got Spearmaster, who, um is just sort of there trying to accomplish this goal. And Seven Red Sons is pretty dismissive about Spearmaster. I thought that was such a weird choice to make Seven Red Sons into this like maniacal dude who just sends out these beings just copying no significant harassment and then just doesn't care about them at all. It's, it's so degrading for like no reason it just it really doesn't make sense <sighs> that's a perfect segue into my last piece but I, I will but it's what I want to end off on but um so no significant harassment basically becomes this beast tamer like I just said and seven red suns copies the idea um but this is, but this is one of, this is a very important contradiction that Downpour makes within itself because it doesn't change the Aquamarine Pearl dialogue. Hunter's Pearl, by the way. Um, the Aquamarine Pearl, the one that knows like even harassment made for Hunter to deliver to Moon alongside the green s s neuron fly, not pearl, the green neuron fly, the slag keys, the 16 slag keys. No, no, no significant harassment basically states, sorry for the unusual delivery method, uh, equipment eroding, etc., etc., which implies that this is an abnormal thing for no significant harassment to be doing not the standard. If No Significant Harassment was doing this pre-moon collapse, why would they be apologizing for delivering this creature, which they are known to interact with, which they are known to train, to do their bidding? It doesn't make any sense. It's not consistent with the character that we already know. It's so frustrating. It's so frustrating. And it's especially, uh, it's especially frustrating because the other iterators anonymously talk about it. They know of it. If other iterators knew about it, Moon would know about it. It's too normalized for no significant harassment. Like, come on. There's no consistency. Whoever wrote for Spearmaster did not care. It's very obvious. It was probably written by one person with the task here. Let's just give you the most dialogue in the game. Boom. Go. <sighs> so, Spearmaster basically belittles Hunter. Spearmaster's campaign basically belitter, belittles Hunter's campaign through and through. It makes Hunter less important. Hunter isn't, like, a last resort where no significant harassment is, like, 
Oh, I'm putting a lot of trust into you. Go. Enjoy the slide keys. Sorry for the unusual delivery method. You know, it, it then becomes like, oh, let's just do the same thing that I've always been doing, that I'm known to do. Oh, this isn't, this is fine. This isn't risky at all. In fact, this is why I've done it, so that we can communicate and deliver stuff to each other. It's like, that's the whole purpose now! Come on! No significant harassment is arguably, or excuse me, not no significant harassment. Hunter is made far less important, and that really irks me because Hunter is my favorite creature. And if Hunter's campaign is bad, then I'm bad because I've made this my whole personality. What a good callback to last video. <laughs> <laughs> no, but in all seriousness, Hunter is important for the story. Hunter himself is not important. Oh, also, I forgot to mention this. The, the reason it's especially upsetting that they turn no significant harassment into a man instead of just whatever you want, or, you know, they, them, uh, w which is also whatever you want, but, um... If you don't give it a gender, hmm, technically they them just by default. And I think that's cool. But no, then they got rid of the only possible non-binary character. It's like, oh my god, you people don't even know your fans. Like, come on. By the way, I'm male. I don't know if that's important to say. Uh, I'm cis. Um, if that matters to you, it's my stance on it. I think it's really frustrating because they had a really good, jokey, possible non-binary character and they completely ruined them slash her. I've always thought it was a her just because it gives a mother child, which is like the strongest bond you can possibly have. They ruined the mother child bond between No Significant Harassment and Hunter. I mean, like, does this stance look familiar to you? If it doesn't, you got a lot more playing, you got a lot more Rain World gaming to do. But if it does, does that make you cry? Because that ending makes me cry every single time. Not literally, but not literally every single time. But going back to it after like a few weeks, or excuse me, not a few weeks, a few months, yeah, it hits hard. Is that where my heart is? Yeah, the left side. I don't know why I had to think about that. I'm human. <laughs> I promise. <laughs> um, so it it just it ruins a lot. Spearmaster's campaign ruins a lot. It makes no significant harassment into this uncaring creature who just oh yeah, I'll go help you because I mean this is just what I've always done there. Instead of like Instead of Hunter being this seemingly last resort type, I mean, like, and I have theories as to what Hunter's ending details, and I won't get into it here, but Hunter and No Significant Harassment are clearly intertwined in a very meaningful way, more so than any other creature that we've seen. They have a very close bond, but now no significant harassment turns into this being who just acts with this, like, thoughtfulness, which is fine, but also, like, it just, it ruins a lot of the intrigue of Hunter. It just... It, it makes everything feel so much less interesting. And that really bothers me, because Hunter is, like, one of the best campaigns. It's so moving emotionally, and Hunter completely changed the way of your life. But then you just ruin it. You just turn Hunter into just another character into another, not a character, into another creature that could be literally anyone else. Again, I've already said this, but 
Hunter comes off as a last resort. It doesn't come across as like, oh, this is what I've been doing. Oh, but this one is sick. Is no significant is has no significant harassment just been sending out sick creatures just like oh but now it's eroding now there's problems oh i had to do this one quickly so are you thoughtful or not you haven't been able to contact moon so you haven't designed anything for it, it it's not even idiot savant it's just a moron who got lucky it's so frustrating <sighs> okay. So, I'll cut this little chapter here, and then I'll move on to the conclusion. All right. So, conclusion time. Spearmaster's campaign blows. It bastardizes so many characters. It completely de demeans and degrades some of the other campaigns. And the writing is the worst out of all of the campaigns. There's nothing interesting, interestingly developed or explored thematically. Um... Even gameplay is just like a less interesting hunter. Spearmaster just feels like a secondary hunter. And then of course you get into the bastardization of characters, the crummy writing. Why do I care about Spearmaster in their campaign? Spearmaster is the worst campaign and Downpour would be far better without it. The things that they chose to canonize has completely ruined people's perception of like base game Rain World 2, which is the most frustrating part. But the biggest problem with Spearmaster is it turns all characters into irrational and stupid potato chip ran beings. These overzealous, narrow-minded, hot-headed, irrational, rash, dysfunctional bots. It doesn't feel like any of these characters actually care about each other. It doesn't feel like any of it matters in a meaningful way. To any Spearmaster fans, what is your favorite part about the story? Is it the lack of care put into the meaningfulness of any of it? Is it supposed to be thematically fitting? Like, with Survivor, you don't feel like you matter because the world doesn't revolve around you. But Spearmaster is a story-driven campaign. You're supposed to care. But all I see are flaws. Ask me for one piece of Spearmaster dialogue word for word. I can't do it. It's not r memorable. It's fleeting. It goes in one ear and it goes out the other ear. Because if you think about it, it's like, this sucks. The Spearmaster campaign bastardizes all characters. All of the characters. It bastardizes Hunter's campaign, makes it far less impactful. Spearmaster is just an, a clone of Hunter. And most importantly, actually, what was the final point? Oh, yeah. Between all of the iterators, it makes five pebbles and any other iterator, it blurs the line between them. Five Pebbles is supposed to be the irrational one because he was hated from such a young age. So many ancients were contentious about his construction. So many ancients hated him. It makes sense that he ended up this way, that he would be irrational. 
and then no significant harassment in base game has to presumably resort to a last resort, which is just sending out a beast to do your bidding for you. Give it the market communication, talk to it, and be like, <laughs> you're going to die now, too. <laughs> Spearmaster, excuse me, Seven Red Suns turns into this loser. Five Pebbles turns even angstier and far less redeemable. Moon comes off even more unintelligent. And no significant harassment just becomes the heroine, the hero of the story. Because without no significant harassment, Seven Red Sons never would have... Excuse me, uh, the, the like, villain. It, it, all these characters turn into a problem, and that's not inherently a bad thing. It's okay to have moral complexity, but what's the complexity here? That these characters are just insufficiently intelligent that all of them have the same thought process and let me just do the first thing i think of how is five pebbles any different than the rest of them seven red suns is interesting because he's oblivious and cautious during the conversation between chasing wind and seven red suns seven red suns has no idea what's happening when Chasing Wind is like, hey, have you talked to Five Pebbles recently? Chase, or Seven Red Suns is like, no, not in a long time, actually, unless thinking about him counts. He has no clue what's happening. That doesn't make sense for a dude who is like, oh yeah, you're struggling. So let me just send you this pearl. Let me just send you this information on how to kill yourself. And then, just for 90 cycles, doesn't even check up on him? What the hell is your problem, dude? Seven Red Suns... It's... It's like... In base game... In base game Rain World... It's, it's a part... It's partly Moon and Five Pebbles that are the problem. Moon likes living, and she's far too caring. She doesn't want to betray Five Pebbles. But in doing that, she's betrayed herself in living. She feigns... Not feigns. She forfeits all self self-preservation enough that she's willing to let things get awful. And instead of stopping Five Pebbles at a time when things wouldn't have been so bad, she lets it get to a state where it's so terrible for both of them. It's Five Pebbles' fault for not listening to Seven Red Suns. In Seven Red Suns and Five Pebbles' discussion, Seven Red Suns makes the case, we are going to live for a very long time, giving an infinite amount of time um, any chance will strike a positive. Five Pebbles, and earlier in that conversation, Seven Red Suns notes, if you were better at reading between the lines, this is excellently done, because Five Pebbles refuses to read between the lines again, and in fact, he refuses to even acknowledge the obvious. Instead of just being patient, instead of just being patient, and knowing that he's going to live for a very long time with fear that equipment erodes, but they're going to live for so long. Instead of being patient and doing it step by step and just not worrying too much, he goes all out in an attempt to kill himself as quick as possible. And then Moon is like, oh, damn, two cycles ago. <gasps> two cycles ago, Five Pebbles, oh, he's drowning me. And then Five Pebbles, like, ref he shuts down. He refuses to let anyone talk to him. He doesn't talk to anyone. Um, and then, like, I think it's not even, like, a hundred, like, I don't know what to call it. But in the decimals, it's not even, like, a hundred 
more. And Moon, after talking to the, the local group and is like, uh, I'm gonna talk to him and it's gonna be really unpleasant for all of us, but I'm dying. So not even like a hundred whatever cycles. It's not like a hundred cycles, it's the decimal before the decimal. Um, she's like, yo, immediately lower your groundwater consumption by one fifth. Please stop. And Five Pebbles says, I was so close. You have interrupted me at the worst time. I will not forget this. How awful. You feel so bad. The struggle of Five Pebbles and the benevolence of Moon. You can feel it. But then Downpour adds in this contrived variation where Seven Red Suns got this idea from Nosing and Harassment to use these creatures and started crafting his own so that they're made to travel long distances and so that they can survive for a long period of time and they don't have the market communication so that they don't get detected by other overseers and so that they can pass upon land not being noticed and they can deliver these pearls but how much time does that actually work because like the thought of that is a paradox in and of itself you made this thing to travel to give pearls to have communication after communication systems are down which means that people are going to connect the dots after a while what are you even doing your strategy doesn't make sense in the long term it's it's stuff like that that doesn't even work but anyways so you've got seven red suns who got the idea from no significant harassment no significant harassment is using these beasts as communication devices to prepare for that so seven red suns is completely uh unable to make anything original just copying after others makes its own variant of it and then sends it and number seven is the same one that gave the pearl to five pebbles so there's like a possible like 50 or 40 cycles where it came it gave the pearl and then it went back which doesn't make too much sense well it doesn't necessarily have to come back in the 40 cycles but it took at least 40 cycles for uh spearmaster to get from seven red suns to five pebbles and again remember seven red suns is not explicitly it is never stated in the local iterator seven red suns is very likely far away so 40 cycles i mean Spearmaster really must know where they're going. Um, especially because they get there from outskirts. So you gotta go all... Excuse me. So you gotta go all the way up. It just... It, it doesn't make a lot of sense. But... Uh, who cares? I guess. I guess who cares? Me. I care. But... And then, so... Yeah, so you've got Seven Red Sons, who's never questioned about anything, just delivers Spearmaster to Five Pebbles. Five Pebbles does his thing. He shuts down all communications, and I guess people don't recognize that. And so when they try to contact... And so Unparalleled Innocence shares the images, um, and then people realize something's wrong, and then they start trying to help. But by that point, it's too late. Um, all the damage has already been done, and so it just... For Downpour, this whole thing is so contrived, ultimately, and... I'm not gonna just leave the video off with this, but I will say this. Downpour would be so much better without Spearmaster. It is because of Spearmaster that downpour sucks, story-wise. Spearmaster creates so many contrived points, plot holes, and straight up, not controversy, straight up, uh, <laughs> I had to look it up, retcon. Uh, it creates a retcon. It, it just completely ruins, it completely ruins a lot of stuff for, uh, for downpour the base game set up this wonderful story and if you ignore everything about spearmaster if you forget spearmaster ever existed it doesn't matter because spearmaster was the worst thing that happened to downpour it just sucks so
Yeah. Um, it's unfortunate. It's unfortunate. And I really don't have anything positive to say. I've already talked about the game plan in the beginning, and it has its moments. It also has moments where it sucks. Um, I've talked a lot <laughs> about the implications of Sphere Master's story, the dialogue, all of it. So, yeah. Just remember, be cordial in the comments, be polite, um, and you're allowed to say negative things. Just don't be a nuisance. Just be polite about it. It's okay to disagree. Um, and if you think I missed a point or misunderstood a point, correct me. I am all ears. I'm listening. I forget. I'm hearing? That's hard of hearing. I don't know. It doesn't matter. Anyways. Ooh, odd. Ooh, fun little... Doing sign language? That was unintentional. Doing sign language while talking about Spearmaster? How fun. Okay. I don't know what my next video is going to be. It'll probably be about Hunter. Um, it might be about Gormond. I don't know. That's foul. Oh, man. I'm so dry. Okay. All right. Thank you. Bye.